Hello racing fans and welcome back to another edition of Handicapper's Corner brought to you by the Derby Bar and Grill. I'm Mike Heads and along with Drew Forster we're going to go through the Sunday July 20th races at beautiful Hastings Racecourse. Uh, we do have eight kickoff at uh, 150 the usual start time. Yeah absolutely a, a solid card they put together. Today. Yeah good, good races. Good betting races and uh, one thing you can look for at Hastings this weekend at your beer stands. Yes, at your beer stands. Me and Mike's picks. Uh, you can pick these up at the beer stands. They have the uh, overnights in the back, so you can see all the horses there. And a uh, coupon, a two for one entree coupon to the Derby Bar and Grill. Hopefully, if you pick those up, we can direct yeah, you in the right direction. Picks, get, picks get a few there. Winners. Got the yep. two for one coupon as well as the overnight on the other side. Yeah, it's uh, nice uh, little opportunity. To Very do well done by our graphics department. Yes, they did a great job. Let's All right, uh, eight races that do get right into it. kick off here with uh, some fillies and mares in for 4,000 going six and a half furlongs. I got a feel of six signed on. I went to uh, the four horse golden ratio. I'm gonna, I've taken this horse in the past and I, I'm gonna say that she's gonna get a, a very good trip sitting just off of the speedy number two, Danny's Chant and the five, Little Miss Bean. I think those are your two speed horses. I think uh -huh. Frank Fuentes and golden ratio get to tuck in that third spot on the rail. And she's run some big races when she just, she could just sit on the fence and then slip through late. She doesn't have a big move to her, so if she has to go three or four wide, she generally hangs. But uh, I think she's drawn a perfect scenario for her. So I'm going to try her to win it over the speedy Danny's chant with Corinne Andros uh, back in the tack and uh, put the three Hillingdon in for third. Uh, I just don't know. I, I thought Hilling it was Hillingdon's day last time, and I really thought that horse had every opportunity to win. Uh, had a hotly contested pace. They were flying. They backed. Last part of the races run slowly, and she still didn't win, which really disappointed me. So I'm going to put her in the third third spot just because I don't see the pace scenario being that crazy hot. I went four, two, and three. I'm going to try and get the old golden ratio back in the winner's sir. I have the same horses, but I did put Hillingdon on top. Uh, Amadeo Perez and William Levanaway have always done quite well together. Uh, and I, I agree. I was disappointed she didn't win the last one, but she is edging closer. Mm -hmm. So I put her on top. Danny's chance I have in the second spot. Same place you have it. Uh, the speed of the speed. Uh, get some weight off for the bug girl, Corinna Andros, see how far uh, she can take them. And uh, Golden Ratio, your top horse, I put in the third spot. Frank Fuentes taking over for Richard Hamill. Uh, those are the three horses, I just have them in different order. Three, two, and four for me in the first. On to the second, three-year-olds and up 4,000 and on to going a mile and a sixteenth. And uh, I've gone- wants to run long anymore, only five of them. I know, five of them, That's, it, sh it should be Almost more, it's sprint. not. I've gone back to a horse that was heavily favored last time, Tribe. Uh, I don't see a whole lot else in here. I just thought, you know, maybe it wasn't his day last time. I'm willing to give him a second chance. If he can run back to the race, he ran uh, two back uh, against Captain Salt. He'll be your winner uh, with Ryan Pacheco aboard. In the second spot, I put Coriandrum, the two horse of the Mel Snowbarn. Uh, just broke her maiden for eight. Drops into the four non two level. A very uh, sensible uh, move for uh, trainer Mel Snow. And uh, Amadeo Perez sticks with uh, him, so I like that move. And the third spot, I put Tack Inouye's horse. Roy's Dream uh, just run third in the race to 1440. He was a decent horse in this kind of category and uh, didn't get beat too far. I don't think this is the toughest spot, so I think he'll be a little bit more involved today under jockey apprentice Corinne Andros. I went one, two, three. Yeah, I agree. I, I don't have a lot to add. I think you're bang on. Uh, the one horse tribe did encounter quite a bit of trouble on the rail last time. This horse would have been far. Yeah. It would have been second. Uh, might, I don't know, not saying it would have beat Contact Man, but uh, this horse would have been uh, in the mix uh, it, for the runner-up spot. This horse had no, no racing room on the final bend. Go watch the replays if you can. Uh, go check it out because they, they are available on the Hastings website. Yeah. And, uh, and, and have a look at that race. Uh, Tribe is better than that race shows. I, I agree with the two Coriandrum in for second. A nice win at the distance and uh, you know, it takes, as you mentioned, the, the logical next play up into the non of two for 4,000. Don't go crazy and go anywhere. And, I, and I, the three horse Roy's Dream, of course, named after a good friend of mine, Roy Jukic, who's Dan Jukic's younger brother who yeah. passed away. Uh, but uh, he, uh, this horse, I, I think the distance suits him. He, he won two starts back. And uh, you know, he couldn't handle 1440 last time, but the pace scenario was dreadfully slow. Uh, I think he's your next best horse. I went one, two, and three. I agree with you in the second. On to the third race. Got fillies and mares, uh, $5,000 maidens going a mile on a 16th. Uh, I ended up on the five, Midday Moon. 
I think the stretch out for the daughter of Surf Cat will be uh, just what she needs. Yep. I know she's out of a phone trick mare, so there's not a, a ton of distance on the dam side. I know phone tricks are generally just speed, but uh, midday moon, I just like the way the horse relaxes, been closing all right, seems to be running at a racetrack, exits a quick heat that was won by Find Your Beach. And uh, you know, you of course on Saturday when B Remarkable runs, if that horse wins, that'll be a you know he got beat. Makes that race tougher. Make yeah. it look a little better than it even looks like. But uh, I, I, I like Midday Moon. I put the one portrayer vision uh, in for second. Uh, this horse ran all right behind Cosmos Spirit and uh, Jamila. Uh, just an okay effort, but still a horse that you must respect on the distance change. This horse has been competitive at higher class in the past. And I put the four Malakas in for third. Uh, dropping in class, been a pace casualty sprinting, and sometimes these horses run a long ways on the head end when they're left alone, when they stretch out. Uh, using, you go 22 and 246, and then they get a 24, 48, and they're two lengths clear. Uh, they generally might run a yeah. long way, so give this horse a look as well. It gets in light with Apprentice Corinne Andros, so I don't mind this one either. No standout in here. I went 5, 1, and 4. I have the same top two. I did put Portray Your Vision on the top. I like the move to Amadeo Perez. Uh, as you mentioned, a horse that has already had the start going long last time, maybe the second start going long. I, I think it might give, uh, get, give her a little bit of an edge, so I put her in the, second, in the top spot. Midday Moon, uh, as you mentioned, on the Mike Anderson bar and Ryan Pacheco. Uh, daughter Surf Cat looks like she'll get the distance. Got good numbers for the distance, so that would be a logical pick as well. I have her in second. In the third spot, I went to Pat Jarvis' horse, Jamila, who's been knocking on the door at this category. Led it the whole way, going uh, a mile 16th last time. Has two races at a mile 16th. The second one was better than the first. So uh, a little bit more progression and she'll be right there too. I got one, five, and six. In the third, on to the fourth, Phillies and Mares, non two, 4,000, going six and a half furlongs. I've gone to a big dropper here out of the Troy Taylor barn, Miss Dickey. Uh, only one start last year for Maiden 20, one by daylight. Come back this year in a very tough allowance race against Willamette and Lockett and Bamboo Dream. Uh, got beat about 10 lengths that day. That was in the middle of May, haven't seen her since, but they bring her back for 4,000 non two, and she will be a handful in here. Uh, Troy Taylor's numbers at this kind of move are very strong, and uh, I think Miss Dickey will find the winner's circle. The second spot I put uh, our good friend Ken Johnson's horse, four times lucky. Uh, they were it's her fourth for, start. It's her fourth start, <laughs> four <laughs> times third lucky. Third time lucky last time. Uh, was running much higher, maiden 30, maiden 25, dropped to maiden five, uh, made no mistake, won that one uh, pretty much leading the whole way under Richard Hamill. Amadeo Perez takes over, four times lucky, he's live in here too. Fourth and the race, horse. sorry, fourth race too. Fourth number race, four. Number four. Fourth start. I hope we don't run fourth. Oh my God. Oh my God. <laughs> four times lucky, there you go. <laughs> that, that's the hunch play of the day. Uh, the second, third spot, sorry, I oh, put, sorry, uh, it's okay, no. I put uh, Find Your Beach, a horse we've talked a little bit about, uh, the drop down to the $5,000 level, and uh, one for fun, come back at a four and on two, just got beat by On the Edge, but ran a game race that day, she fits in here very well as well. I went one, four, and two in the fourth. She's in for 4000 too. And in for 4000 four No, four times lucky. Four times lucky. <laughs> hey, I'm, oh, done God, I'm done with that. I'm done with that. I know, it's overkill. <laughs> I agree with the one, Miss Dickey. Uh, it's a big class drop, has speed, has the rail. Going to get pressure from Finder Beach and the Kula Kid. There's going to be a bit of pace on up front, but I think the company change uh, will, you know, obviously, they, 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 they've fallen out of love with Miss Dickey, and uh, she's, uh, you know, been aggressively spotted down for 4,000. She's going to be tough to beat. Put the two horse Find Your Beach in for second. Uh, logical horse to have on the ticket. Good runner up effort last time to On the Edge. And I agree with four times Lucky as well. It seems to be the third best horse. Um, I think one, two, and four. I got the same three. But yeah. uh, I went one, two, and four. On to the fifth race. Uh, kind of a co feature today, or actually, it is a feature uh, allowance event. Nice enough. race here, yeah. Optional claimer going a mile and a 16th. Good solid older horses here. Got nine of them uh, set to do battle. And uh, I had a tough time. I, I really wanted to pick Modern, uh, the yep. seven horse, but I, I just think this horse is going to get pace pressure from the four, the Gov. And uh, unless he can shake loose, then uh, that horse is really live. But I went to the five, Senior Rojo, uh, a horse that was a good runner up, sprinting at the same level last time. Really impressed with the run it had against Golden Triumph, who had things pretty easy on the head end. Went in 15, 115 and change, so really leaving Senor Rojo no chance to win. And I was amazed that the horse got up for second. It was a good run. Yeah, and he was uh, had a dreadful lane. draw that yeah. day, too. It was way outside. Uh, Senor Rojo, better distance, uh, good draw. And obviously, you know, this. You know, these are his peeps now. Uh, you know, this is his company, and if he's ever going to get back into stakes, you know, he's going to have to win a race like this and get rolling again. So I like him. But the seven-horse modern, who's had some nice 
I know he's been running against better horses, you know, Mr. Bowling and title contender, but he's had no pressure put on him in any of those races. Mm -hmm. He, I know, and it, you know, maybe he won't again, but maybe he can go 46 and change and get pressured and keep going. I don't know, but I know he's had 24, 48. He's had pretty nice cushy halves before he's had the pressure put on him at the quarter pole. And uh, he's done well to hang on. He, he, he fought off Wilo Cat two starts back to save the play spot when he was put away by title contender. And I was pretty impressed with that. And last time he ran good again. He's got beat by two nice horses. You know, they're, they're two horses that are likely going to be in the long acres mile. I mean, he, he got beat yeah. by two legit horses. So this drop into allowance company can't hurt at all. He, he's logical as well. And I put the Juan Qatar's Pearl in for third. Uh, give this one, a, I know it does have Scott Williams named uh, as of, uh, our, but he is not coming out. So this one will need a rider. Yeah. Uh, but we will see Scott pretty soon here on Sundays. Uh, Scott will be coming out on, on weekends, or on the Saturday, Sundays, Sunday pardon cards, me. Yeah. Uh, but uh, Qatar's Pearl tried the good ones on, in the Lieutenant Governor's uh, on Canada Day. And uh, well, you know, this horse you know, had some trouble after a, a slow beginning and this never got in the race the pace scenario was dreadfully slow and and once he was out of position he was out of the race but he i wouldn't give up on this horse he had two nice back-to-back -back wins i was pretty impressed with that win uh two starts back over dj snow and go for guinness so uh, he, he's a legit horse as well i went five seven and one i got the same top two i see it kind of the same way you do mike if modern can get uh on his own and, and yeah the gov holds a big key to this race if the gov yeah. doesn't go the modern's going to be tough. Modern's the gov tough goes, to yeah. uh, which you think it, he would. It's it's a style. Yeah. Then uh, modern may have to run a little it's, early. It's probably going to soften him up for mm. Senior Rojo. I did the same thing. I got Senior Rojo on top, uh, and modern in the second spot. That can change depending on how the race plays out. But right now, the way I see it, modern is going to get a little more pressure than he may like, and that's going to set it up well for Senior Rojo, who's closing very well. Uh, He's Under Amadeo Perez, first time that Amadeo rode him uh, last time, and uh, got a lot out of him down the lane. He was closing very nicely into a into a fast race. Uh, so I have uh, Senior Rojo on top, Modern in the second spot. The third spot, I went to Dino's other horse, Iskar, who's been posting some good numbers against uh, the top horses here, like Mr. Bowling, Title yep. Contender, and of course Modern. Uh, only got beat four and a half lengths last time, uh, and he's got two long races under his belt. He's in light. I gave him a bit of a shot in here, but uh, definitely Senior Rojo and Modern are, are the two that look like the tough ones in here. I went five, seven, and eight. On to the sixth. Three-year-olds and up 4,000 non-winners of the year, going a mile and a sixteenth. I've gone to the five, the five horse, our good friends, the Corrigans, a Fleet Mac, uh, led the whole way last time and just got caught by uh, Minstrel's time late. I can never really figure out a Fleet Mac. He runs a good one and then a bad one, so I yeah. wasn't sure whether to take him because he ran a good one last time. But I'm going to stick with him. He got a really good number for it. If he can repeat that performance, he'll be your winner. The second spot, I went to the two. Cross rail court out of the Mike Anderson barn. Uh, the, just got beat by his uh, stablemate, Lucky Molly Minor, uh, last time. Uh, for a second, and then his last time out, he only got beat three lengths, ended up fourth, but he didn't have the best trip, and uh, now he's down the two hole, maybe a little bit better trip, he could make some noise in here. In the third spot, I put Jim Brown's Mary's App, uh, another one that Amadeo Perez, who would have had options in here, chooses to stick with him, so uh, I'll, I'll throw him in there too. I got five, two, and six. Yeah. I went to the four horse Halos Quest. I'm going to go yep. a little different. Uh, this horse is, has been running against a little better company, running against Mark and this bruise for you last time. Had a dreadful wide trip. I would, had no chance in that race. Two starts back, ran into Talkett's Charm and uh, was battling on the pace. Ran a decent, better than looked fifth. And I, I just think the, the drop down to 4,000 has to do this horse a lot of good. Gets Alex Bissono. I think there's a lot of positives with Halo's quest. I think he has enough positional speed to get in play too. Maybe behind a Fleet Mac and Country Kid, who will likely duel again. And if Halo's quest is the one laying in third, I, I really like this horse. I think this horse will run well. In the second spot, I put, uh, actually, they should run this horse in Kelowna, the sixth horse, Mary's App, because every time she surfaces, the rains come, and uh, there's a yeah. lot of places that need some rain uh, to stop forest fires, and some of you take her to California, too. But uh, Mary's App, last four starts, all slop, and it's supposed to rain here. Uh, yeah. uh, get a little bit of precipitation on Sunday. But uh, Mary's App, I was hoping she's going to get back on a, on a fast track, because you really... I don't think we've seen the best of her, and if you look at her wet track form, she hasn't hit the board in four starts on wet track, but if she can somehow get on a dry track, I give this horse another shot, and Amadeo obviously likes her as well. He stays in the tack, and I put the seven horse uh, country kid. I think he'll go farther than a Fleet Mac, just because it was only his first route race yep. of the season. Uh, last time while dueling, where when it was a Fleet Max third mile of 16th race, so that horse is probably a little better prepared than Country Kid, and I think Country Kid will be a little tighter for, for that. And uh, I went four, six, and seven. I, I like uh, Halo's Quest, though. 
On the seventh race, uh, allowance event for three-year-old fillies that haven't won two lifetime and on three BC bred. Got a field of eight signed on. Uh, I, I went to the two here, Fire Beauty. I'm going to say that Amadil Perez made a little miscue here, and, and, and he ends up on the elusive Lily, the three, but uh, that's a tough decision of yeah. who to ride. I mean, both fillies are going well and uh, ha have a lot of talent. But Fire Beauty, I know she's shortening up to six and a half furlongs, but I know she can sprint. She's better than the race that she yeah. lost to Champagne Gal. So I was pretty impressed with her run last time. So I got to go to her to win it. Elusive Lily hasn't done anything wrong for a high percentage outfit that's batting at 50%. And I put the seven horse champagne gal returns to a sprint after uh, a tough wide trip uh, early and then got the lead. Kind of had to do a lot of early running in that race and uh, she flattened out. But I think getting back to a sprint uh, <coughs> will help her. Uh, so I'm going to put her in the third spot. I went two, three, and seven. I have the same horses, but I did put Champagne Gal on top. I like her outside draw. Uh, Alex Bizzone is going to be able to put her where she wants. And she mm -hmm. hasn't had a whole lot of luck no. in her three starts. Even the day she won, she was very wide. Blew the start. Didn't have a, yeah, didn't have a great trip. So if, if things can kind of go her way, I think that she could be uh, find the winner's circle here. I put Elusive Lily, as you mentioned, on the Anita Bolton Barn in the second spot. Uh, two wins on, under Amadeo Perez for Maiden 25, then Open 25. She's won the figures in her and well as well and of course I have uh, Fire Beauty uh, in the third spot. Very interchangeable. Uh, I, I don't love any of them over other ones. I just kind of ended up on Champagne Gal hoping she gets a better trip with Elusive Lily and Fire Beauty but those are the three that look like they're absolutely the toughest in here. I went seven three and two in the seventh. On the nightcap, three-year-olds and up, Maiden 5,000 going six and a half. I've landed on the five horse Magic in Overtime. Uh, unlucky to still be a maiden, uh, ran a big race, his first time out uh, this year, but uh, ended up winning by almost three lengths, but came over on uh, Pacific Crest in the stretch and was DQ'd for that, even though he was uh, much the best in that race, but he did interfere with the second horse. Yeah, he, 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 he had to come down. Um, but the, this son of Moo talked to him, obviously he has a little bit of run in him. If he can duplicate that race, he's in the winner's circle. The second spot, I went to the seven, Storm Over Sky, our good friend uh, Jimmy Veach's horse, uh, Hall of Fame trainer Alan May, another one who did win his last start, but is still in the maiden race as uh, there was a loose horse and it was called uh, a no contest. Uh, very rare to see that. But uh, another one that uh, is coming off a win, two horses in here in a maiden race that are coming off that wins, wins that are back in a maiden race. So those are the two horses I Don't think are tough in here. Day. You do not see that every day. In the third spot, I put uh, Prince Rainier, Top Connections, Troy Taylor. He was in that same race and he just got pulled up because yeah. there was a loose horse going the wrong way and it, it was it, it was a mess. Uh, but uh, decent connections, uh, really good connections, decent breeding, uh, decent works. I'll throw him in the third spot. Five, seven, six for me in the nightcap. Yeah, I agree with the five magic in overtime. Uh, you know, it was a it's good run and a good time. Yeah. Uh, lots to like. I mean, I, I don't see anyone in here that can run that fast. Uh, I'm going to go to magic in overtime uh, for Tracy McNeil. Put the eight horse Wee Harry in for second. It shortens up to six and a half furlongs after a try going along. Uh, I don't mind this horse in light with apprentice uh, Corinne Andros. A couple of his sprints this year have been pretty good. He was actually fourth behind uh, magic in overtime after uh, you know kind of a wide trip and this horse might be as good as uh, you know should be better than most and um, definitely you need this one on your ticket I, I agree with the seven storm over sky who will be flattered by the win uh, because three quarters of the field pulled up yeah and that's why you're seeing a first fight and he got that. to go really slow but he still fought on to beat uh, yeah no he, he did fight on to favorite. defeat uh, yeah. regal legacy yeah. but uh, those are the only two riders that were riding and uh, but uh, you know, you got to respect Amadeo Perez being on the horse. The connections are good. I went five, eight, and seven in the Sunday finale. Well, that'll do it for the analysis of of the Sunday card. Next up on screen will be our Sunday picks. A little recap here. Uh, back in uh, race number one, I went to the four horse uh, Golden Ratio. I went four, two, and three. Race number two, I went to the one Tribe. I went one, two, three. Third race, number five, Midday Moon, over the one Portrayer Vision and the four Malalakas. And the fourth race, I went to the one Miss Dickey over over the two and four. Race number five, I went to the five, Senor Rojo, five, seven, one for me in the fifth, but I do like five. Actually, all three of them. I don't mind Qatar's Pearl. I wouldn't want to leave that horse out either. I'd play three of them in the late pick four. And the sixth race, I went to the four, Halo's Quest over the six and seven. Seventh race, once again, I think you need three horses in your pick three and pick fours. Two, three, and seven. I like the two, Fire Beauty. And in the finale, you might be able to key here with the five, Magic and Overtime. I went five, eight, and seven. And up next will be my picks. In the first, I went to the three, Hillingen over the two and the four. In the second, I agree with Mike on number one, Tribe over the two and the three. In the third, I went to the one, Portray Your Vision over the five and the six. In the fourth, again, I'm with Mike on number one, Miss Dickey over the four and the two. 
In the fifth, number five, like Mike, Senior Rojo over the seven and the eight. In the sixth, I went to the five, a Fleet Mac over the two and the six. In the seventh, I went to the seven, Champagne Gal over the three and the two. And in the nightcap, I agree with Mike on number five, Magic in Overtime over the seven and the six. Well, that'll do there it for go. the Sunday edition uh, of Handicapper's Corner, brought to you by the Derby Bar and Grill. And thank everyone for tuning in. Uh, hopefully, we've given you a good information to make you make some wise investments. And uh, if you can't make it out to the track, uh, of course, uh, you can come out here to the Derby Bar and Grill and watch the races. First race does go at 150. Got lots of simulcasting going on. Actually, it's great simulcast time now with Del Mar, Saratoga. Saratoga Two yeah. premier meetings are yeah. uh, up and going right now. And uh, of course, they'll all be on the screens as well as Hastings on the big screen. On behalf of Drew, thanks everyone. Oh. Remember to go to your beer stands and get uh, our get picks. Get our, our the picks. And, and the picks will be here too. Yeah, yeah. You can, get, you can always get our picks, of course, on our website. You get the picks at the beer stand. Of course, that comes with a coupon for the Derby Bar and Grill. Yeah, Come the two for one. That's a, big, that's a big yep. so Chef Andy's got some nice. Uh, uh, nice stuff here, two for one entree or two for one yep. entrees. That's, yep. that's, that's, that's a great, uh, great. Uh, you know, that's something to take advantage. That's the daily double. You get that's our picks and dinner. You can't beat oh, that. Hopefully, hopefully it all goes well. <laughs> okay, on behalf of Drew, thanks for tuning in. We'll see you next time here on Handicappers Corner. <laughs>